Welcome, everybody, to episode, this is a big one, this is episode 20 of No Traps, No Glory. And uh, it's been quite some time since we have been at the helm of the mic last, has it not, Mr. Producer? Yeah, we were near the beginning of the pandemic. Yes, we're, we're I believe we are, we are eight months deep now. I mean, uh, I would say... If I got pregnant at the beginning of the pandemic, you'd see me with a big bubble gut right now, and I'd be ready to birth, just about, being the end of my trimester. But here we are. Um, for most of our viewers, you have missed the pelt that I had grown, but it is now shorn, as well as uh, many, many other things. As everybody knows, this has been quite a tumultuous year in time. But nonetheless, we are persevering. We're going through and looking forward to getting back into the full swing of No Traps, No Glory and providing weightlifting information. And hopefully, as the next coming months unfold, we're able to get back to competitions and everything else in normal life, as they say. Even though uh, I, I personally don't like the term new normal. I think that's a bad term. I think we have to get back to normal. But that's neither here nor there, and I digress. But uh, in going with the theme of competitions happening again today, uh, today our lifter from Canada, she had competed, and it was to qualify for provincials, provincial championships up in Canada. And after she had a great performance, not so great performance all at the same time, so a rather a bittersweet uh, lifting session, if you will. But it, it, got, it got me thinking about uh, training age and training experience because afterwards we had a little rundown of everything that she had uh, occurred and or that she had dealt with and gone through throughout the competition and as well as the perspective that she had thereafter. So just to backtrack a bit, uh, all of her training in the past couple months leading up to competition, obviously her training was really not too effective because she can tr uh, has enough equipment at home to be able to get adequate and, and full weightlifting rigors accomplished but uh decided kind of somewhat last minute that she was going to enter in this competition uh, enough time out to make weight and what have you but ultimately in the time leading up to this she had made great progress technically with snatching great progress with cleaning and it allowed her uh, in, in concurrence with many other life events allowed her to go into this with a little bit different attitude and growth always leads to that you're the more you grow, the more, or in, as you advance, if you're pushing yourself in certain endeavors, the more perspective you have and the more perspective and experience, you're, you're able to view things uh, obviously different than you may have previously. And with this said competition, uh, like I said, she did great in the snatch. She went three for three. It, it, was, it, it was almost like a, a new lifter had evolved. And with that, and let's say our discussion afterwards, has had a lot to do with training age and your training mentality. And uh, it, it comes down to the experience that you have over time. As you train, you accrue experience through your training, you accrue experience through competitions, through witnessing others, experiencing things with others. And that's something that is not, at least that I have seen, not generally discussed with too many newer lifters. And when I say newer lifters, I mean, let's say from beginning at zero all the way to about two, three, even four years. I know when I was about four years into weightlifting, I've never heard of or had any discussion of what my training age and training IQ would be. Because let's say when I had started, or even let's say five years ago versus now, let's say 10 years later in weightlifting, my perspective on how I approach training versus how I was is entirely different. And that leads to how you approach competitions as well. So going back to our Canadian lifter, she, like I said, had great success in the snatch. Technically, it was the best she's ever lifted and clean and jerks. Uh, she, her opener was planned at 73 in training. She made 73, and I actually thought it was a conservative opener. And yeah, yeah a conservative opener in the sense that in training, she would just smash through it, never had any trouble. But then in the competition, it was like, a, like she was trying 85 kilos. It was completely different. But due to her experience with now let's say more time under her belt due to her experience with having these circumstances and having gone through these circumstances now like it and i she said and i know for the the, the fact for myself as well when i was younger i'd want to i told her i'd probably want to drive head first into a stone wall just to eject myself out of the window and, and suffer a little bit for the 
just irrational irrational thought that I would be going over like oh, I can't believe I, I messed up and didn't perform as I should but now it's it's the point where you accept things as they are and you move on and you utilize that to augment your training a little bit and understand that each day each circumstance everything is different and you're always going to be evolving and I think for everybody out there it's it's a perspective that you should try to consider most everybody wants to max out everyone wants to go heavy everyone wants to make progress every time they're in the gym but it's something that you can't and as, as one of the guys in the gym actually uh, he said uh, a couple weeks ago I, I really liked how he phrased it he was uh, saying that training training the purpose of training is to work at a capacity to where you can hone skills you can challenge your body and stress it enough to where it recovers and then you adapt and get better competition or maxing out is the realization of all that work so you can't max out all the time you can't try to force yourself to make these unnecessary gains because you need to have the foundational work and approach everything in a very methodological way in order to achieve that now you could say have your methodology meth methodology that you're going to employ that doesn't mean a strict uh, spreadsheets or programs or um, whatever this guy does I'm going to do it means going into it with a mindset that you have to work the right thing at the right time and have training goals and objectives whatever they may be and that had me reflect back to when Klokov came to the gym and he was saying how he doesn't write his programs out he goes by how he feels he goes by what his body's telling him and generally he tries to work within a certain parameter where he plans when he's going to go heavy let's say x distance from a competition but then between that time he's going to work moderate and try to refine what he needs to refine because there's only so much you could build strength leading up to a big event so you want to take the time to plan accordingly to know that where you are and what you need to be doing versus what you want to be doing and with training IQ and your training age that's something that comes over time and learning to be able to accept that weightlifting is a long game it's just like a martial art in the sense that it takes about 10 years for someone to become a black belt and a common saying that uh, in many martial arts and especially jujitsu that I've heard is that the day you become a black belt is the day you really start learning it's when you have a comprehension and an understanding of what you're doing that is different from the uh, I guess you could say the what's the word I'm blanking on a word right now uh, like an adolescent or immature thank you immature perspective of just wanting the want at the time being instead of looking towards the future and knowing how to get there and shaping it would be akin if you were going to take a wad of clay and slam it on the ground expecting a pot to form as opposed to putting it on a, a the whatever those what's a pot spinning thing the, the turntable yeah all right it works a turntable so you put it on top of your record you start spinning it but you gradually keep shaping and forming you add clay when you need you take clay away if you have to and you continue to work the process to where finally you have the desired shape and the desired outcome nothing happens on the immediate so I think that's something that everyone should employ into their training because like I say uh, and especially for how my training has been during the entire quarantine is that I have goals of what I want to achieve for the day I know if I can work up to X set and achieve that and have it feel a certain way then I've accomplished my goal move on and now the rest of the exercises are going to be in succession of uh, succession of importance and succession of goal and focus so they're a corollary to the main exercise that I want to employ in order to get better at so now I know if I did this last week two weeks from now I want to be able to achieve why number more and I gradually keep throttling backing off throttling backing off with these goals and objectives in mind so that way I'm not just pushing hard constantly but I'm doing little bits of refinement and just giving enough to where I'm, I'm skimming off the top I'm not digging all the way down into the bottom of the pot so consider that I think that's a very fruitful way to approach your training and even recommend to your coach or or if you do your own planning what have you to consider this because I never I never understood spreadsheets I never understood why everything is just it's, it's both I'm sorry spreadsheets that are just basically keeping you from going nuts and killing yourself every session so instead of worrying about going hard focus on achievements and little achievements end up becoming big achievements so if that's a way that uh, hopefully this will help you expedite your mindset on how you approach your training uh, I know for me now it's gone a long way I wish I had that a little bit more my young my youth now am, am I still young am I sure, sure. okay good I'm, I'm still young so 
that's where I've been at. Um, for now, we're going to do a few more of these. We're looking forward to getting you some consistent podcasts on a regular basis. Now I said that now the quarantine is over. Uh, lastly, we are, as, as usual, brought to you by Kostritzer. However, if you notice, they've changed their packaging, which I'm not too happy about. I do prefer the old Regal style, but it doesn't change the contents of what's inside. Remember that for us all. Okay, until next time.